My lords, it's a pleasure to follow the noble Lord Steele, who has done so much over the years to assist not only Ugandan Asians, but many others in these shores. And I too would like to thank the noble Lord Poppert for securing this important debate, celebrating the tremendous contribution of Ugandan nations to the life of this country following the expulsion from Uganda by Idi Amin 40 years ago. Looking back at the time of the expulsion, I recall the arrival of disorientated people with little more than the clothes they were wearing. And I was struck both by the resilience of the Ugandan Asians and the extraordinary generosity of the British people. There were some noisy, ill-informed protests against the decision of the Edward Heath government to welcome bewildered refugees, in some cases thrown out of the very land of their birth. Edward Heath rightly earned the lasting gratitude of Ugandan Asians, and his humanitarian stance was, as we've heard, widely supported by many, many others. My Lords, following the end of the First World War, immigrants from India, mainly from Gujarat and Punjab, were encouraged to bring their enterprise and skills to the newly developing British East Africa, to Kenya, Uganda and Tanganyika. Life was tough and they endured many hardships. My father was a medical officer there for some years and he'd tell us about the difficulties the early pioneers had in establishing themselves in a new country. But over the years, they gradually became the industrial and commercial backbone of the country, with their own schools, places of worship, clubs and community centres. Then suddenly, confronted with Idi Amin's cruel and erratic behaviour, they were forced to leave their settled life behind and seek a new future in Britain. Well-educated and previously reasonably wealthy people had to leave their homes, their assets, their African friends for the uncertainty of life in a new country. Some spent a brief period in resettlement camps and from there sought cheap accommodation, crowded accommodation, worked all hours of the day to feed themselves and their families. But their extraordinary resilience and spirit of enterprise stayed with them. They worked long hours running corner shops or in lowly paid employment. By dint of hard work, some slowly moved into the food and clothing warehouse businesses. Others, as we know, moved into wider branches of industry and commerce, bringing trade and added value to the country that had given them refuge in their hour of need. The same spirit of enterprise soon took them and their children into medicine, law and the professions. I remember a young lad in a local corner shop who used to do his homework in between serving customers. Today he is a university professor. My Lords, you've heard of some of the individual achievements and successes, and I want to focus on another very important achievement that has lessons for us all today. One of the criticisms of immigrant communities is that they sometimes are reluctant to integrate into the life and norms of the country, their adapted country. Instead, leading parallel lives in what are sometimes termed ghettos. My Lords, it's a two-way thing. On the one side, some immigrants generally tend to fear the hostility of others and therefore tend to keep together. Unfortunately, this itself increases suspicion and sometimes a measure of actual hostility in the host population. We see a little of this sometimes today in some parts of Yorkshire where even those born here sometimes seem to lead separate lives. None of this applies to those who came from Uganda 40 years ago. 
Many in Britain understood and sympathised with their plight, and the new arrivals enthusiastically adapted to their new environment, where they've since gone on to reach the highest levels in local and national government, including, as we've heard, much valued, a much-valued presence in this House. As I said, successful integration is a two-way process, and I want to end by paying tribute to the British people for their kindness and generosity in welcoming Asians forced out of Uganda. It's a truly remarkable success story, which has important lessons for us today in a world of increasing movements of populations and cultures.